guess what? Another day in another box that's coming in. That's right. You know, we're starting to try to add animals that are going to be to the next vision of the new Reptarium, right? So we're not just kind of filling up this Reptarium, but we're starting to get animals that are going to make sense with this thing. As a matter of fact, we've got some news that maybe as soon as tomorrow, I might be able to see the first iterations of the drawings of the expansion of the building. Again, we've got a ways to go, so I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm already starting to get them things that I think are going to be cool for the new Reptarium, and that's within this box right here. Let's go ahead and roll that unbox real. And you know, we are always going to have tons of snakes and lizards and all kinds of other stuff, alligators, you know it. But the truth is, is that one of the things I really want to add beyond the aquatic stuff, of course, is some more turtles, to be honest with you. You know, kids love turtles. I love turtles. I used to collect turtles when I was a little kid. I used to go out and catch them in the wild all the time. I absolutely love them to death. So we ended up getting some more turtles. And I can assure you, we're going to be adding a whole bunch more. Oh my gosh, these are so cool. And this is just a species of turtle that I've always loved. Take a look at that. These are actually called Razorback Musk Turtles. I mean, they are so absolutely cute. And when these are actually about nine months old right now. So they're actually born quite a bit smaller than this, believe it or not. So these are really well started ones and they are absolutely incredible. These are actually a native to the US. They'll go anywhere from like Alabama, Oklahoma, all the way down into Florida, believe it or not. They get about six inches when they're adults. So they're not a big turtle at all. But just look at that cool ridge back, right? So in the wild, they're definitely gonna be a little bit more like feeding on fish and crustaceans and stuff like that. In captivity, of course, they can eat turtle food like that you do, but we will definitely supplement them with other types of proteins as well. They get about six inches long, so they're not a big turtle, but they're still a cool turtle, but that face is absolutely adorable. I mean, oh my God. So we ended up just getting a bunch of these. In total, we got 15 of these for like a new setup. And again, these will probably end up going into the new Reptarium when they're actually a little bit larger. And then we'll try to add some more aquatics as well. I, just, I don't know, I just have become a turtle nut. You know, I've always loved them, but lately I've really been getting into them. So it's always cool to add new things to the Reptarium. And uh, these guys are our newest addition and aren't they freaking awesome? Can you lay some eggs tonight? Yeah. She laid some eggs tonight. All right, so this is actually a beautiful Max Max. Who dog, I tell you what, this is a nice one too. This is what they would call a granite Max Max or a San Luis Potosi king snake, and that's a beautiful animal. It looks like she's got a gorgeous clutch of eggs here. I tell you what, she did really good. Mama, where are you going? Where are you going, girl? I'm gonna go ahead and put these eggs down over here. We'll get Mama back in her cage, get this out. Again, as always, we always clean the cage up. We get her fresh water, we get her all set, get her back on the food, because remember, colubers will double clutch, meaning that she's going to get bred here in the next probably 10 days or so and hopefully in about four to six weeks she'll have another clutch of eggs nevertheless two four six seven beautiful eggs i tell you what that egg song that's a nice song this next clutch is actually an arizona mountain king snake or what they call a pyro milana and this is like the typical thing that you would find like out in the wild like that but this is the male it was bred to it's what they call a sense line hypo the sense line hypo is a reduction of black pigment the melanin pigment and it is a recessive mutation so all these babies are going to be pyro that are het for sense line let's see how many eggs not a big clutch by any stretch but there's four little eggs two four little eggs in here again you typically pyros lay anywhere from four to maybe six eggs unfortunately they only lay one clutch a year so they're definitely a lower fecundity animal i mean you're lucky to get four or six babies per year from an arizona mountain king snake but it's pretty cool to get them nevertheless what are you doing out here buddy doing you got a sloth have you seen a sloth my neck's been really good today this one's definitely trying to bite me i can tell you can feel them squeezing around my hand, you know, trying to figure out where you're at. But uh, See? they're not striking. And what's worse about these guys is they're like little pit bulls. When they grab on, they don't really like go right away. Yeah, actually, might be a, they're actually one of the strongest draw, draw pressures out of a lot of pythons. They may not have crazy teeth, but man, you will feel it when they bite you. I and, and the worst thing is, too, is like very often they actually don't even constrict when they eat. They just start working their way down. Alive or not, doesn't matter. You like Steve Irwin right now with that eye pan? If you see one, don't muck with it. Danger, 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 danger. See how he's wrapping me like this? So he is definitely try to find a part of my body and bite me, and definitely probably try to even eat whatever part he's, he's, he's biting. So this is definitely an indication. I'm mad, I'm angry. Whatever is messing with me, I'm not gonna let go of. And, it's, and they're gonna regret ever touching me. I mean, you can even see my fingers. He's starting to squeeze me hard. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I love it. We gotta get that dog. 
Next up, a clutch from a Pueblin milk snake. Lots of Pueblin milk snakes. I love them to death. They're really good. I always talk about being one of the best starter milk snakes. Again, we'll get this cage all cleaned up, get her ready to go. She'll be back on the food within a couple days and then we should be good. Let's hope for good eggs. Yep, yeah, beautiful clutch. Absolutely lovely. You know, it doesn't matter how many times I do it. When I start to open that lid, it's always that rush of adrenaline. You know, I do. I got good eggs. I got bad eggs. What the deal is. And this was a good clutch. We've got two, four, six beautiful eggs from this Pueblin. These guys will take about 60 days to hatch. And then we're going to have some beautiful little baby Pueblins. Got a clutch here from a lavender cow king that is actually half for snow, bred to a lavender snow. This group has been mixed. Like the first three clutches were bangers. They are perfectly all fertile. And then the last two clutches have been a little bit shaky. Uh, it looks like this one's a little shaky as well. And it's weird how it goes that way. You know, maybe the males kind of just ran out of sperm at the end. I mean, it's hard to really say, but we do have a couple slugs in here. So I'm going to just take the slugs out. And I always take the slugs out just because those will actually rot a little bit. And you don't want the rotting slug eggs to actually affect your good eggs, right? So it's just best to take them out. And to be honest with you, it's pretty easy to separate slugs out because they're so pliable. They don't really harden like the normal eggs do. So you can just kind of peel them off pretty easily just like this. I can usually do it just with one hand with a camera in the other hand. Usually a lot easier if you don't have a camera, if you know what I mean. But we've got two, four, five good eggs, two little sluggers. Noah, you got something. Always cut towards yourself, kids. Yes, exactly. I taught them well. I taught, I taught them that, kids. Look at, wait, smell it first. Get your head down here. You can even smell the, oh, yeah. the aroma. Yeah, the aroma. Oh, wow, it's double box. Let's see what we got. So this mushroom jerky, what? Mushroom jerky. Oh, this better send us to the moon. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's made with shiitake. Some coffee. Dude, I have the best friend ever. You know, this oh, is gosh. just a friend. Right? That's awesome, you man. Me soap. What is this now? This is, is this CBD him? honey. CBD honey? Wow. <laughs> what? Oh my god, I can't. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. Some jam. We got a couple cloths. My gosh, she just uh, she more honey. Dang, man. You got locked. You got hooked up. I got That's hooked awesome. up. It's nice. You know, I've talked about this new gene animal for the last couple years, and it's just basically a gene that popped out that's really orange as a baby. This happens to be a cine new gene. And you guys know that cinnamon are kind of like dark brown, right? And this is a kind of orangey animal. And I've been saying, like, what should I call it? So we decided actually on pumpkin ball python. Now, I know there's a pumpkin pie, but I don't think that there's a pumpkin ball python. So this, instead of a new gene animal, is now going to be called the pumpkin ball python and we've got four clutches on the ground that's bred to all kinds of really cool stuff and we have one more clutch left to lay this year so hopefully genetically we'll really be able to isolate and find out what's going on with this pumpkin gene i think it's going to be an absolute ripper because it's so absolutely incredible cleans things up make it really orange so this project is a cool new project and i just thought that it needed a cool name and i think pumpkin ball python is a pretty cool name i think when we start getting into things like uh, pumpkin spice and pumpkin this and pumpkin that so just wanted to update you guys so uh, here is the pumpkin ball python. I actually still have no idea what we're doing. Oh, we just got a cleaner glass. So basically, Tiana, uh, she's been in a weird mood the last couple already. days. Yeah, as soon as you open it, for some reason, she thinks she's getting fed. So we gotta work with her. So. Well, I'm scared of her because she doesn't like me, but let's do this. Right. Does that take her out? <laughs> Stop, Michael. Okay. Right, what are you doing? I don't know. She doesn't want that. Let's put her on your shoulder. What? Okay, I'll clean the glass. That's fine. Okay, sweet. I will not gonna bite you. Why doesn't she like me? Come on, Tiana. Hey, clean glass. Hey. Not really clean glass, Will. Oh, you don't do it all that often. There we go. No, that is not good at all. Look at all the street. Windex is street clean, free. So that means that's you. Okay, glass has two sides. There we go. One and two. That's not. <laughs> Look at it. Lori's gonna kill me if she sees it. She's gonna blame it on Jim. Her adopted son. Oh! Wait. Did she just fart? Mike, did you say I was adopted? Yeah, her adopted son. Lori's in. Just clean the glass. If she poops on me, Lori's so upset. <laughs> I look just like him. Have you seen him? Have you seen the hair? Yeah. <laughs> it is actually really bad. Yeah. What are you doing? But I don't know why. Dennis says, will you help me clean the glass? Does it look good? No. How about you right, get up I'm in gonna the cage? Get up here. No, I'm gonna hook you out no, no, no. now. Yes, no, give no, me no. the iguana. Mike, give me the iguana. Okay. Give me the iguana. <laughs> climb up there. I no, can't get up there yes that fast. No. Yes, you can. You climb the fence. Go. Give me the iguana. She doesn't like you. You say all the snakes don't like me. She I hates you. Ow. Ow. Mike, go clean the glass now. Don't. 
Why does this iguana hate my oh, shit? Is a turd hanging. <laughs> this is my favorite hoodie. <laughs> and my shoes. <laughs> this is great. Day. I'm falling off tonight. No, you can't. I need this. Oh, it smells so bad. You should shit more. Just poop in more. This is great. <laughs> this is the best day ever. Now what do I even do? Got to stand here and just like, poop it out? Yeah, you got it. There's no point no, getting poop in the I cave. Don't want paper towel. What am I gonna do with that? This is so gross. I'm just standing here while this. Now she wants to wipe it all over my hoodie. You're good. It's clean. Oh my god. This is the best thing ever. Is she pooping more? Yes. Is she really? <laughs> yeah. I can't even see it. Here, you can put her back now because I don't want her to poop in the cage. You're good. Go ahead. Oh, you're such and a I'm good girl. You're cleaning up the poop, too. No, that's all you. If you guys enjoyed this video, here's another playlist that I did handle a bunch of venomous stuff and all kinds of other cool stuff. You could watch one or two of those videos. I sure do appreciate it. On this side, do me a favor. Hit that subscription button. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.